The natural penicillins, of which penicillin G is the prototype, are narrow-spectrum antibiotics. Although considered narrow-spectrum, they are actually effective against a large portion of gram-positive organisms, gram-negative cocci, and many anaerobes. Their efficacy against streptococcus pyogenes and syphilis is well documented, and their coverage of oral anaerobes also makes them very useful for odontogenic infections. Penicillin G and its variants such as penicillin V remain the drug of choice for a variety of conditions. Even to this day, resistant strains of group A and B streptococcus have not emerged. Unfortunately, many other bacteria have developed resistance to these agents, including pneumococcus, enterococcus, meningococcus, and bacteroides species. Also note that this class of penicillin is not active against graminegative rods, and because it is penicillin susceptible, it is not effective against most staphylococcus species either. As the natural penicillins have all but lost efficacy against staphylococcal species, penicillinase-resistant penicillins were developed. These antibiotics are known as anti-staphylococcal penicillins and include amphicillin, oxacillin, and decloxacillin. These antibiotics have a very narrow spectrum of activity. Their primary use is in treating methicillin-sensitive staphylococcal infections, or MSSA for short. Keep in mind, however, that they are not effective against MRSA, that is, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and for that matter, neither are any of the other penicillins as well. Nonetheless, these anti-staphylococcal penicillins are actually more effective at treating MSSA than antibiotics like vancomycin, which are used for treating MRSA. So a patient with a severe MSSA infection would be better treated with an anti-staphylococcal penicillin than a drug like vancomycin. Now, in regard to other gram-positive cocci, the anti-staphylococcal penicillins do have coverage against streptococcal species and thus can be used for the empiric treatment of skin infections when the pathogen may be either staphylococcal or streptococcal bacteria. In these situations, penicillin V would be a poor choice as it does not have staphylococcal coverage. On the other hand, anti-staphylococcal penicillins are less active than penicillin V for streptococcal infections, so penicillin V is preferable to, say, oxacillin for a group A beta-hemolytic throat infection. And just one more thing to pay attention to is that anti-staphylococcal penicillins are not effective against enterococci, anaerobes, nor gram-negative organisms. The amino penicillins, represented by amoxicillin and ampicillin, are the second generation of penicillins, and they have a broader spectrum of activity than penicillin G. This group of antibiotics retain the gram-positive coverage of penicillin G while being significantly more active against Listeria monocytogenes and had greater activity against gram-negative organisms as well. Due to this enhanced antibacterial activity, amino penicillins can be used to treat a variety of infections. For example, amoxicillin is often used first line for middle ear infections, which can be caused by non-beta-lactamase producing strains of Haemophilus influenza. And when susceptible, amino penicillins can also be used to treat urinary tract infections due to E. coli, and if indicated, enteric infections due to Salmonella or Shigella. In combination with inhibitors of beta-lactamase, even wider coverage is obtained, including against MSSA, Moraxella, many anaerobes, including Bacteroides fragilis, and gram-negative rods, such as Pastorella multicida. However, even with the addition of a beta-lactamase inhibitor, the amino penicillins are not active against MRSA, penicillin-resistant streptococcus pneumoniae, or vancomycin-resistant enterococci. Lastly, we have the anticinomodal penicillins, which include the third generation of penicillins, carbenicillin and ticarcillin, and the fourth generation, piperacillin. These agents have extended coverage against gram-negative rods and can be used to treat infections due to Pseudomonas and Enterobacter species. They are also active against anaerobes, including Bacteroides fragilis, and thus can be used to treat intra-abdominal infections. These anti-pseudomonal penicillins are also used in combination with a beta-lactamase inhibitor. Well, those are the four classes of penicillins, and I hope that this video lecture helped clarify their spectrum of antibacterial activity. If you would like this flashcard to serve as a memory aid, then check out our website, www.med4vl.com.